Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mr. Austin the Garry the Soprano. Thank you so much for checking this video out. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. All your comments, your subscription, your engagement does motivate me to give you more content. Please do leave a comment out there and let me know what you think about these videos and what, what else you like me to talk about. So today's video is not going to be a long video, I think, because I just want to share with you what you should expect in the ESL interviews especially here in Thailand because I've done it I've done it a number of times and some of my interviews I think didn't go well because I did not know what to do I didn't prepare well so what happens when you're called for an interview as a teacher ESL or English teacher so there are two types of interviews that we usually do especially in Thailand and I believe in other parts of the world as well where there's the ESL industry or maybe any other teaching job because I've never been interviewed for a teaching job outside of um, Asia in general so like every other job, there is your first interviews where you interview where you meet your employer. They talk about you. you. They talk about the industry, your expectations, your teaching philosophy, why you want to be in the ESL industry, what is your teaching style, your classroom management, all the basic things that are related to teaching. You need to know. You need to know the styles. You need to know how teachers are deliver that their lessons. Everything that's got to do with teaching, you have to know. And usually these interviews are quite relaxed because your personality also plays a very huge role in the uh, these exchanges the conversations that you're having with your employer that is the first part now the second part now this is the part that's either going to get you the job or maybe make you lose the job this next part is the demo or the mock this is now where you're going to demonstrate how you're going to teach it's very important that if you don't have experience or you just finished your TEFL, your TEFL, it's very important that you prepare and you practice a lot. If you have taught before, you definitely know how you deliver your classes, but it's also very important that you understand this industry. Maybe you were coming back from a different, you're coming from a different teaching industry and you're entering the ESL industry in Asia. I believe is quite different. First thing that you need to know, when it comes to mock or demo classes, you have never really met the student or people that you're going to do the mock with. So basically, you don't know the level of English or the level of the subject that you're going to teach to them. In this case, we're going to talk about English because that's what I have most experience in and the information that I will share would be very valued. So you don't know the level that they are in. You are just told that, oh, maybe they're A2, they're C1, you, so you base on what they think. They might think the students are good. They think they might think they're bad and you will prepare based on that. But what I always encourage people is it's always better to over prepare than to under prepare. So when you prepare, I advise people to start simple to the hardest. Make sure that you've got it all covered and there is a flow moving from step one, step two, step three, step four, up until step eight. Make sure that you know how to flow through that. The reason why I always tell people to over prepare is that when you get to the place, if your students are very good and you're under prepared, that is bad. You might not even have the chance. You might not even have the chance. So you might lose everything. So when you're over prepared, you will know what to pull from what you have already prepared to feed to them. Another thing, choose a topic that you are very confident in. This topic you can literally deliver in confidence. You can deliver it without preparing a lot, even though you have to prepare, but it's a topic that you're very confident about. And it's also flexible. The topic is flexible. You can move it around in so many different directions. And your topic should also be able to be included in conversations. I always encourage people who ask uh, advice from me what to do, find topics like animals, topics like food. Like when you talk about animals, you can start with your students listing animals, the sounds that they make, what they think about the animals. Are these good animals? Are these bad animals? Are these animals safe? Are these animals dangerous? Uh, the animals uh, that we can eat, animals that we shouldn't even try to come close to them, endangered animals, so things like that. Food, talk about food, the food that you like, uh, food, food groups, 
food that is healthy, food that is unhealthy, how to prepare certain types of meals, what you can get from from um, from mixing certain types of food, your balanced diet, and then going to the market to buy food. That is conversations. So find words, I mean words, find topics that are quite easier to extend and uh, quite easier to deliver to the students. So having prepared your lessons and you're about to get into this demonstration interview, one thing that I always do and I feel it's very helpful to test the level of students before you deliver is to always try to break the ice with your students, to test that level and that comprehension. I think if you've done your TEFL, you will know that there are stages. You go in with your warmer, I mean, you break the ice, you go in with your warmer, the vocabulary, the conversations, and the closure. So what I usually do is that I introduce myself. And as I introduce myself, sometimes I say like the wildest thing ever, like, hey, my name is Orson, I am from China. They're like, oh no, you're not you're not from China. Then I'm like, oh, where are you from? And then they'll like um, say out the countries and then I'll say something again that is a bit advanced, that is very wild as well. And then they will respond. That is when I will gauge like, okay, the students can speak. The students are very engaging. This is good. So as I introduce myself and have these little conversations, I know the direction that I'm going to take my class. So as you get into your demonstration as well, your energy, your personality is very important. Uh, engage with the mock classes. One thing that I still appreciate this guy who have, um, trained me in the TEFL industry is always not like a, be the clown, be the entertainer, you know, feed the students, um, find something that makes them smile, something that makes them laugh and continue doing it and find other ways again to continue making them smile. So I'm a dynamic person. Even now in my videos, you always see my hands move around. So I'm always dynamic even when I teach. I think that's something also that is very helpful. And also when you're teaching or you're doing your demonstration with younger learners, it's very important to always mime and, you know, show signs of what you're talking about listen speak look sit down stand up these are some of the basics that you learn in your TEFL classes if you've not done your TEFL please go on google there are a lot of videos that people like me are giving demonstrations on how to do this what I'm saying that videos that people are actually doing it and letting you know your demos you can be stopped right then then it's usually like 10 to 15 minutes so you incorporate all of that very quickly you would also need to practice writing on the board if you don't have a board find a way that you can practice somewhere to do your writing avoid that when you're writing your full back is like facing the students what i always do is i always try to be like 45 degrees now that i think i'm a master i can do it i can literally go like this so that is what you need to do. So your demonstration is very, very important. Prepare and find a topic that you're able to deliver just like that. Be enthusiastic, let like flow, let it be like a flow, go in, go out, come back. Like don't, don't be afraid. Even if you are delivering and maybe they pick up a mistake and they correct you, one thing that I always say and one thing that I always do is that acknowledge it, acknowledge that, oh, really? Oh, well, I didn't think about it. I've, I've always done it this way. So I guess I'll think about it. Um, don't, don't fault them. Don't tell them that they are wrong right then. Then it's, you know, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really trans translate well but acknowledge what they're saying. And if you're, if you're confident with what you've said, you can uh, later tell them what you, why you did it and why you think um, it's done that way. Not discrediting what they thought, it's how it's done. Acknowledging it and telling them that this is how you have uh, it's done, this is how everything has been done. Maybe they've learned it the other way around, but this is it. All right, I hope this really makes sense and I hope this will help you and now you know.
you know that you need to do a demonstration. You need to practice your teaching styles and always make sure that you're teaching your students speak more than you. You are not delivering a presentation or a speech. You are actually doing something together with your students. Let your class be uh, student centered. Let them be part of that lesson more than you. So in your mock class, make those students speak ask them questions one thing that i always do even up to date if i run maybe i ran out of something to say i always ask my student to give me reasons i'll ask them a question and i'll and i'll ask them why as they think i oh i'm also thinking i'm also thinking of what to do next but now i'm a little bit experienced these things just literally come naturally that's second nature. Thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to like. I hope this helps you and you get an idea and I'm not all over the place. Two interviews. You sit with your employer and you do your demonstration on how you are going to teach. Thank you so much and see you again on the next video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.